Hey there. Well, a lot of people have this um, misconception that the uh, Passover and Easter are the same thing. Um, I think the Bible says it pretty clearly um, in Acts 12, verse 4, that uh, it's not it's not the case. Um, so actually, why don't we just read it, read it for ourselves and see what it says. But before that, I want to read something here to you out of... Um, um, out of Noah Webster's dictionary, 1828 dictionary, uh, the American Dictionary of the English Language, great book. I uh, bought this out of the local church Bible publishers. Anyway, I'm going to go to, uh, let's see here. I was trying to go first to Passover. But before I even got to that, I came to um, Pasch, which is, says, see Pascal, or pa yeah, Pascal, the Passover, the Feast of Easter, okay, so keep this, that's, that's what it means, the Feast of Easter, it says, um, Pascal is the Greek form from the Hebrew, it says, okay. Uh, pertaining to Passover or to Easter. Now, listen to this next one. The Pasch egg, it says. An egg stained and presented to young persons about the time of Easter. Really now. And if you go on to read, like in Jeremiah chapter 7, Jeremiah chapter 44, you see there's the Queen of Heaven there, and they were baked cakes and everything for the Queen of Heaven, and if you do any kind of research about the word Easter, or where it came from, Oster, Yestar, or what have you, you would notice that it was, um, that it came from Anglo-Saxon, so Anglo-Saxon word. Matter of fact, let me go to that real quick, and then we'll read Jeremiah, I mean, Acts chapter 12, verse 4. I want to go to um, Easter here for you and show you what the definition is of Easter. And it tells you, it tell you it's you know, a commemoration, this, that, and the other. <laughs> All that fun stuff. Um, here. Let's see. Rs. I went the wrong direction. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Easter. It says a noun. Saxon. Easter. German. Austern. Supposed to be from Austria. Goddess of love or Venus of the north. Hush. The goddess of love or Venus from the north. Call him, son. Hush. All right. And in honor of whom a festival was celebrated by our pagan ancestors in April. Whence this month was called Easter Monath. Easter is supposed by Beta, Beta rather, and others to be the Astarte of the Sidonians. See Beta, Clover, and authorities cited by Clover and by Jameson under Peshad, but Quarry. A, and the next definition is a festival of the Christian church observed in commemoration of our Savior's resurrection. It answers to the Pascha or Passover of the Hebrews, and most nations still give it the name, this name, Pascha, Pas, or Pequay. Hmm. But, if you look um, further back, you keep on going farther back. You look up those words. 
Pasch. You see, Pasch is the Passover, the Feast of Easter. Okay? And Paschal is pertaining to the Passover or to Easter. The Pasch egg, an egg stained and prepared, presented rather, to young persons about the time of Easter, which is supposed to be Passover. Now, somebody tell me what that has to do with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Absolutely nothing. Uh, the, the egg is to represent fertility, just like the rabbit represents fertility. It is a token or something concerning the um, goddess Astare, whatever you want to call her name. It's the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah chapter 7 and Jeremiah 44. You see in the book of Revelation, she's the harlot that sits upon the beast. Even Esther, the queen of Persia, meaning Persia, was named after her. Not by her own choice, Hadassah that is, but named by the king, um, Ahasuerus, whatever his name is. Um, it's like um, Daniel was named Belteshazzar. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego was named Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. These are names that they didn't choose for themselves. They're the names that Nebuchadnezzar gave them. And we know that because we see in um, Daniel chapter 4, verse 8. In the, the Geneva Bible says Passover. And the uh, Rogers, uh, Tyndall Rogers, uh, Thomas Matthews Bible says um, Easter. Here it says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the, of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him. He put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. I say again, it says here, Then were the days of unleavened bread. Passover the feast had already taken place. It was called the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but the actual unleavened bread took place after the Passover. I mean, there's a lot of scripture that indicates that. Okay, so before I finished up, I want to go some over some scriptures that I found to be very interesting. Because the Lord, with his disciples, um, ate the Passover meal before uh, he was crucified. And whenever he was crucified, the, the, the Jews... Of that um, the priest or whatever they were preparing to eat the Passover hmm how about that so which one was the correct one I think the one the uh, whenever the Lord ate the Passover that was the Passover time as, as it should have been and maybe they observed it the day a day later I don't know but anyway I was gonna read these scriptures just for the sake of reading them I'm out of Matthew 4 7 I'm sorry Matthew and Mark uh, anyway, they tell me how many accounts of the word Passover it is, and it's um, 72 times between, uh, in the whole Bible, it appears 72 times. <clears throat> and it says in Matthew 26, 2, it says, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. This was two days. It's the feast of Passover. Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Passover, it's the same thing. <clears throat> but the actual Feast of Passover takes place whenever the lamb is killed with the bitter herbs. And you notice that they, Jesus himself, and I think I'm understanding this as I talk it out, Jesus himself was their Passover lamb <clears throat> to the disciples. So they didn't eat the lamb, they only had the, um, they only had the blood and the wine. I'm sorry, the, the blood, as, you know, as the wine, as the blood, which is the wine. And also they had the bread, the unleavened bread. But Jesus was their Passover, so he was there with them. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> so the Jews <clears throat> uh, had their Passover, which is uh, the Passover, 
Um, but the, the spiritual Passover and the worldly Passover seems to be, I, I guess. I'm, I'm not trying to add nothing to Scripture. I'm just saying that from observance from what I see um, there in the Scriptures. Uh, Matthew 26, 17, Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at the house of my disciples. Okay. Matthew 26, 19, and the, that was 18 and 4, what I just read. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. The meal itself, I believe. Now, we'll go to Mark. Um, Mark 14, 1, it says, After two days was the feast of the Passover and unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Uh, Mark 14, 12, and the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou go? Where wilt, where wilt, where wilt, yeah. where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? Okay, so as really that's telling me the Passover is the day that Jesus, um, the, 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 what the disciples are doing, not the next day when Jesus was crucified. The official day was when Jesus himself, um, when they, they, they ate the, the bread and the wine, and Jesus himself was the actual Passover, and that's the when they were to take the Passover. <clears throat> but it was, seems like it was like a, another day later, whenever he was crucified. That's what it seems like. Matthew, Mark 14, 14, And whatsoever he shall go in, say ye to the good men of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And I, I guess that's why he's, it's coming clear to me now, this is my blood, this is my body, you know, things like that. Makes sense now. <laughs> Most people probably already knew that, but it, it's just dawning on me more and more when I read it. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found it as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Uh, Mark 14, 16, and Luke, let's see what it says here, Luke 2, 41, um, talk about the, the parents, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover, we'll get into the Passover of the Lord, let's see here, okay, let's see here, Luke um, 22, Luke 22, 1. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover, drew nigh. So that's the actual time whenever, I guess, they kill the lamb. And that's the feast part of it. And then were the days of unleavened bread, as it says in um, Acts 12. That's the, the bread of affliction after the fact. And you can see where it says that in Exodus and the other chapters numbers 33 i believe <clears throat> and um let's see here luke 22 8 i believe oops nope luke 22 7 then came the day of unleavened bread when the passover must be killed same thing again the feast of unleavened bread the day of unleavened bread uh, same thing Luke 22, 8, and, when he, and he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. Uh, Luke 22, 11, And ye shall say unto the good men of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Luke 22, 13, And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. 13. Uh, Luke 22, 15, And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And that's what he did. He ate the Passover with them before he suffered. The, the, the wine and the bread. Because again, he is himself it was the Passover lamb. Oops. Get John there, buddy. Okay. Got my 
phone, looking up all this stuff besides my Bible, which is, you know, the Bible anyway. Oh, I'll get it on here. John 2.13. Um, and the Jews' Passover was at a hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. I think this is one before we get um, crucified. Yeah, and let's see here. Okay. And the Jews' Passover was not, it said, um, that's interesting. And it said, and the Jews' Passover was not at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. John 11, 5. Um, John 12, 1. Then six days before the Passover, King Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was with, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. John 13, 1. Now before the feast of the, uh, feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. John 18:28. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. Notice that? And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat. Passover. Jesus had already eaten the Passover meal with his disciples, and but the Jews had not ate the Passover yet. They were still trying to be clean. They hadn't ate their Passover yet. Because Jesus was their Passover. And it being the fact that he did it, maybe that was the I'm pretty sure it was the right time to do it, but they didn't do it at that time. The Jews did. The priests and the scribes and the Pharisees. Whoever. John eighteen thirty nine, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you at Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? John nineteen fourteen, and it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. See there? So with that being said, there should be no confusion whatsoever. Jesus is not a Paschal Lamb, unfortunately, as Noel Webster said in his dictionary. He's not the Easter Lamb. He is the Lamb of God, as the Bible says he is, because there's nothing in the Bible that says he's a Paschal Lamb or the Easter Lamb. The Bible in English does not have that word Paschal. Just like the same conclusion that it gives no indication whatsoever that um oh well it gives no indication whatsoever that it seems to be meaning that easter has anything to do with the lord jesus christ it has nothing to do with passover because if you look at the word of paschal paschal whatever you want to call it it's a greek and latin word right and uh, it's a derivative it says of pisak a cognate what do you call it, of their Arabic word? It doesn't have anything to do with the Jewish word. Matter of fact, I said that word wrong. It's Pasak. Pasak. Anyway, I think the Bible points it out very clearly. Um, Easter is the name of a pagan goddess. It is also very related to the name of the ones that uh, the Anglo-Saxons um, worship with a, a very similar name. Uh, so, um, and also you see the connections with the whore Babylon. You um, see the um, the um, so many uh, coincidences. Might as well say the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah chapter seven. And Jeremiah chapter 44 about the cakes that were baked to the Queen of Heaven and so naturally they would attach that person or just some goddess or whatever not even real attach that to the uh, the baking of unleavened bread and again you see clearly in the Bible it says that 
Peter was to be brought out to the people after Easter. After Easter. So whether you call that Easter or Passover, it was still after. After. And clearly, if it was Passover, it would still be after the... Um, it, then there were the days of unleavened bread. It would have been after that. So Easter and Passover clearly can't be the same thing. And um, again, Pesach is the Arabic or was it an um, Aramic word for Passover. And when you see people saying Happy Holidays or Chak Shamiak, they're not saying Happy Easter, they're saying Happy Passover. So if they're not using Easter to say that it's Passover, then why are we using Easter as if it's Passover? And it's not. Easter refers to a pagan goddess, pagan holiday. Okay? Passover refers to a holy holiday, which is a holy day. I think it's very clear the Lord has shown us through his word that Easter is just that it's a pagan holiday that Herod worshiped in along with maybe some Jews Jews hold it the same whatever in some cases or whatever I don't I don't know for sure maybe they did maybe they didn't I don't know but it's an indication just by the name of certain things the Queen Hadassah Esther, her name was Esther after a pagan goddess, evidently. Just like Daniel's name, he was named after a pagan god. God. Just likely like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were pagan gods' names to the um, his three companions. It's, it's pretty evident. The Lord, I believe, is showing us this in the Word. Just like the Queen of Heaven that it talks about in Jeremiah chapter 4 chapter 7 and chapter 44 just like down uh, whore babylon the harlot same thing every indication shows that in god's word you have to read it to know what it says and the only way to read it properly and to get the sense to get the understanding and you have to ask the lord for the sense you might not get it all at one time is to ask the holy spirit to help you discern to help you understand by inspiration to what the truth is and that, my friends, is all I have to say about that. Read it for yourself. Be a Siberian. Look it up for yourself. God bless. Take care.